Morning, Tuesday. Welcome back to the channel. Um, I'm going to go and have a look at this 160 with the noisy slough. Just been on the phone to the customer with the DX10 and the fuel gauge. Um, that machine's away out on hire, so he's going to give us a buzz when it's back in. So no panic for that one. Yeah, I've got about an hour or so drive out to this uh, 160. I'll see what it is. Catch you when we get there. Right, I've made it to me. Uh, 160 with the noisy slew. I'm just about to start it and uh, give it a whirl round and round and see what sort of noise we're dealing with. Um, there's a big D6 dozer over there, look. Animal. Animal. Right, we'll get this started up. See if we can hear anything. It's quite, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but it is quite grumbly. I've got this uh, clean drum now. I'm going to drain the uh, gearbox oil out the slew gearbox and uh, just uh, take note of what comes out of it. Right, so that's the uh, oil out the gearbox, which uh, looks a bit creamy. It is a bit loose as well. Um, but when he was on the phone, it was yesterday talking about noisy slew. He uh, dipped the slew gearbox and he didn't think there was anything on the end of the uh, dipstick. So um, what I told him to do was uh, run a bit of engine oil in there, drain what's in there out. And he said there was a, fair, there was a decent amount come out. I said, well, run a bit of engine oil in there, run it for half a day, and then, you know, just to try and uh, sort of swill the gearbox out, get any contaminants out of there, and then uh, put some fresh gear oil in. But um, yeah, when he drained the oil out, there was, uh, so there was a fair bit of sort of grit and uh, nasty looking stuff coming out of it. So I'm not concerned that that's not the right oil in there, but. Uh, the colour of it does tell me that uh, the gearbox is probably going to be contaminated at the very least. So I'll go over to the machine and I'll show you where I've got up to. Right, hopefully there won't be too much wind noise. It is a little bit breezy here and uh, we have just had a shower of rain as well. But um, yeah, I've got all the pipes off the slew motor. And um, what I'm thinking is I can lift this slew motor out by myself. I don't need to get a machine in and sling it out. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull them, separate the motor from the gearbox and just have a sort of look in the gearbox, see what we can see. And then I think I should be able to take the input shaft out the centre of the gearbox. Um, so if everything looks all right from sort of first impressions, then uh, what I'll do is I'll pop the, gear, the motor back in. It'll only be half hour, 40 minute job to put it back in. I'll, um, I'll run half a dozen bolts back in, pipe it back up and just run the motor without it being attached to the gearbox so to speak and just see if the noise is coming from the motor or if it's in the gearbox side. Um, yeah that's what I think I'm going to do. Right I've separated the motor there from the gearbox here and uh, yeah pretty sure that should be fairly solid. I don't think that should move like that. So I'll pull this uh, level of gears off and uh, have a bit of luck. Right, it is pretty windy, so I hope it's uh, hope it doesn't spoil the quality of this. But if you look in the gutter there, there's bits of teeth and grit. It's got right down in amongst this bear in here, and um, it's come from this tooth here. It's also damaged the planetary gears. A couple of teeth cracked off it. Um, so yeah, they're all junk. I'm pretty sure, yeah, you just take that grub screw out of there and uh, pop that shaft out and replace the uh, replace the gears so that won't be so bad. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna have to take this gearbox out now, or the gearbox housing, and uh, yeah, hopefully that shouldn't come out with too much of a fight. 
hopefully. What you struggle with, so you've got the ring of bolts around the outside and then this one here, that's the dowel, so that's hammered into the chassis of the machine. It's that there that stops the gearbox twisting like that. The bolts only hold the gearbox down. The bolts should never have any stress or strain on them. Um, I have seen it where that dowel has managed to walk its way out and uh, once that happens, it doesn't take long before these bolts fracture and crack and then uh, you've got a big job on your hands then trying to get those studs extracted because they'll be loctited into the chassis and uh, yeah, it's a major job like been there done that and uh, wouldn't like to do it again victory got it out and um, so that is the slew pinion and actually it doesn't feel as though there's any play at all on that bearing but it is a little bit notchy where um, where all these bits of stuff's got into that bearing so yeah I'll be well I'm gonna get him a price for four gears for sun gear um, this has actually escaped without any damage at all um, so yeah I'm gonna get a price for four gears sun gear bearing and seals around here um, and I think you'll probably be surprised the complete gearbox will be probably less than 1500 quid and I bet those gears individually I mean even if they're 100 pound a piece there's five of them that'd be 500 quid bearing two of those bearings 80 pound a piece you know you're three quarters of the way to a new complete gearbox so um I will see what he wants to do anyway, I don't mind either way, it's uh, no great hardship, whichever road is taken, but that's it out, I'm, uh, I'm just going to batter this dowel out now and hopefully it'll come out, I might need to gently warm this back at the workshop, but I'll give it a couple of bats now and see if it'll come away. Aye, right, so right enough, um, believe it or not, I've just got an email through from Dan in the parts, so the parts that I need to repair that gearbox is going to cost around 14, yeah, 1,450 odd quid ish. And if I want all the parts for tomorrow, it'd be another 100 quid. So you're looking at 1,600 quid in total just in parts for that gearbox, plus probably an extra hour, hour and a half's labour to rebuild it. Um, and a complete gearbox, which will be ready just to lift straight in is uh, 1350 plus 100 pound carriage so you're probably going to be by the time i've built that gearbox back up you're probably going to be 250 quid better off just buying a complete assembly um crazy how that happens isn't it i don't really understand the maths of the logic but um it suits me either way it means i've sort of it's it'll free up a couple of hours hopefully tomorrow we'll see when it comes it's on a pallet so um parts that are sort of less than 25 kilos and um, they'll come direct from our well direct from Doosan's Cardiff parts facility and um, the next day which is normally around half past eight which is brilliant um, but when it's palletized it goes into the pallet network so it'll probably go from Cardiff to a distribution center at Birmingham and then it'll probably get up halfway up the country to another pallet spot and then it'll get up to Carlisle and it then goes out onto delivery and it's just sort of look of the drawer as to what time it turns up. It might not be tomorrow, it might be uh, Thursday morning, Thursday afternoon. So we'll just have to play it by ear, wait and see when it comes in. But um, yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting. That It's not the first time I've come across it either where sort of individual parts has been more expensive than a complete assembly. So um, yeah, right, I'm gonna tidy up and uh, there's a 140 tail swing with a fuel gauge fault to go and see. Um, the code on it is current below normal to fuel gauge, so, or fuel sensor. So I'll go and have a look at that. He's got wagons on, so he says I can have it for half an hour at a, t half an hour at a time. So hopefully I'll put my gauges, I'll put my multimeter on it and we'll spot the problem straight away, probably order a new sensor for the tank but uh, if we're trying to find a broken wire and we've got wagons coming every half an hour then uh, yeah that's going to be a bit 
bit of a one of them, isn't it? So, right, crack on. So while I've been working away on this digger, these lads here have been stripping the topsoil off and uh, I've got to go out the way I came in, which is that way. And uh, I can't get by that way now. There's too much soil in the road. So he's going to cut us a ramp. It's about a foot drop and uh, yeah, if it had been my old van, I probably would have uh, closed my eyes and hoped for the best, but I dared do it with my nice new van, eh? <laughs> so he's going to cut us a nice ramp, which will be handy for when I come back anyway, no doubt. I'm at my 140 zero tail swing, fuel gauge isn't working, um, and it kind of came back on briefly earlier, he phoned us and told us it's popped back up and then it disappeared again. Um, be honest with you, I thought the fuel gauge or the fuel sender was down in here, but anyway, after a bit of ratching around, I've found it in it's here. And um, on closer inspection, look, a couple of wires bust there, and uh, this wire here feeds the camera and it's on its way as well. The root cause of that is down here. This whole frame's moving because that bracket's, that bracket's snapped, so. I'll, uh, I'll repair this wiring, put it back together, and I'll order this gentleman a new um, a new bracket for going on here. And that should uh, that should eliminate the problem for future. I've made me repair to me uh, fuel gauge wiring, and I thought I'll just open this conduit up and have a look. And yeah, the uh, the side camera isn't looking too clever at all, so might as well repair them. Temporarily, I think I'll try, I'll try my best anyway and reroute the wiring so it's not going to get jammed in there while his new uh, bracket turns up. But I tell you what, did it rain then? You wouldn't guess it now, it's bright blue sky and sunshine, but what a shower of rain we had just finishing that up. Anyway, I'm thoroughly soaked to the bone, it's five o'clock, um, yeah, I'll be half an hour, 40 minutes, I'll be home, so I'll. Uh, Hi, I'll see you in the morning. Right, there's my digger, and uh, we've had a good shower of rain overnight, so um, I'm gonna point my van in that direction and see how far we get. Everyone cross your fingers. This will be the first real test of the rear-wheel drive van. Everybody told me, rear-wheel drive, you'll get stuck everywhere you go, so I'm about to find out. And that's as far as she wanted to go. Um, I could have done with it sort of just around the back of that 235 there, but um, we'll just have to make do here and I'll get the toy and I wrapped out for uh, when we're leaving. Right, it's windy on here, but uh, that's the new slew gearbox. It's come with this plate on to keep everything in there nice and clean, so whip that plate off, fetch the slew motor over, sit it on top, run these bolts up, lift it all as I want it into the machine. Nice and easy. Right, that's it in, it's home. Um, oh, we had a couple of attempts at getting the uh, motor onto the gearbox in the right position. It was uh, third time lucky, but um, no, that's it. That dowel down there, I've just hammered that home. I'll, uh, I'll get these bolts rattled down, chuck half a dozen pipes on, fill it with gear oil, and uh, that'll be that. Service that monster next.
the motor is in let's go for a twirl so um, I'll just start off quietly till I've got all the way around just to make sure there's no teeth off the um, off the uh, spinny doodah bearing ah, what's it called? slew ring spinny doodah bearing I'll just go quietly round Well that's good, no nasty bangs or knocks. I'll try it around in the other direction a little bit faster this time. Well that's a lot quieter anyway. bit dizzy now right I think that is a job and knock so to speak um, yeah I'm gonna uh, gonna service that monster now I really like those two three five zero tail swings they just seem like a really good solid digger and um, the, the, you know that when you drive them they just feel really nicely balanced um, yeah they're a lovely machine not that I'm biased or anything, but that is, that's a nice machine. Right, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll park this up. Um, yeah, it's just started raining, look, and as I've been fitting that slew motor, we've had a good strong wind, and it hasn't half dried the ground up a lot, and I'm thinking, well, I might be able to drive out of here yet, but uh, this, uh, if this rain persists, then I'm going to have to get dragged out by a digger. I uh, I was right, like just that hour and a half of uh, strong wind and sunshine, and uh, shoved the van into reverse, dropped the clutch, and gave it to her, and she shot back in reverse. And I thought I'll come down the field slightly and round her up, so I'm pointing the right direction for getting out of here. So, right, get this two three five serviced. <whistles> right, I'll just stand inside the van here because it is proper windy outside um, I've got the engine oil draining I've got the final drives draining I'm going to do that engine oil filter, that water and fuel filter that main fuel filter and below there you can just see it the pilot filter and that'll be a 500 service complete um, so I'll set you up on a time lapse and you can watch us whizzing around and uh, I'll catch up with you once I've got this service finished eh? I don't know if the uh, time lapse showed how much of a struggle I had getting that filter off. My word. Um, yeah, I guess I didn't uh, oil the seal when I uh, fitted that last time after its first service. And boy, did I regret that. Ha! <laughs> um, yeah, so it was me. That's me. Um, what do I use when I've got stubborn filters? Well, I've got them. And I've got them. I'll use them 99.9% .9 of the time. I've also got this filter chain, but where the filter sits, it's almost, there's about a three or four mil gap between that angle bar, uh, angle bar there. So I couldn't get that in. I've got a filter strap, but um, that has seen better days. That is another item on my shopping list that, uh, yeah, I've got a long shopping list and nothing ever seems to get ticked off the shopping list. Anyway, I persevered with these and, uh, and I got it. So, like I say, I've very, very rarely been stuck. So, it's probably why that. Uh, filter strap doesn't move up the shopping list it just sort of stays on the shopping list <laughs> right 
I've uh, fuel filters done. Just got that pilot filter and a new filter to put on there. And guess what? I'm gonna put a bit of oil on the seal on the new filter. out this field and uh, I think I'll do rather rather a lot better than I did try to get in here because uh, that wind hasn't half dried things up like yeah it's no bother no bother to the sprinter today uh, watch out for any big potholes otherwise I'll be leaving the mud guards behind look oh no drama Right, time to head in the direction of home. Right, I'm going to make that do for today. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed the video if you have don't forget to give it a like and if you haven't already hit the subscribe button and for more bits and pieces throughout the week head over to ali's digger diary on instagram um, tomorrow i've got our oil leak on a 160 and i've got a 140 to go and look at for the arm creeping in so stay tuned for that i'll uh, see you in the morning have a good evening and uh, catch you later